We're back with Carlton Berkeley, activist out of Harlem. We're here on the spot. Take it back, Carlton. Okay. Um, go with the book and then we're going to go to your photos. Let's, uh, okay. Let's All right. So, again, in this book, it mm -hmm. teaches people, right, how to more or less act when they're being confronted by the police. Mm -hmm. It also tells them, right, if the police violate them, right, it tells them how to go about it. Not physical. You can never win physical with, with the police, right? What you have to do and what I teach is take that verbal abuse, take the little bit of, of physical abuse, right? But look at that officer. Look at that officer face. Be able to identify that officer. Look at the officer's name tag. Look at the officer's shield number. Look at the car that the police are driving, right? Write down the date and the time of the stop. And if there are people around right after the stop, get their names. Because those are going to be your witnesses. That's going to testify on your behalf when the police stop you. Then call us. Once you get all of that and the witnesses, call us. Call me. In my book, in this book, it's a website. My website, what to do about this dot com, and also there's a phone number, right? You call this phone number, leave your name and, and, and a number. I will get back in touch with you. Explain to me how you was violated at you know while being stopped with the police, and I will help you, mm -hmm. right? Fight the police, sue them if they did anything wrong, and not only are you going to sue the police officer, you're going to sue the city and the state of New York along with the police. Well, let me tell you something. I had a friend. We was on the phone talking when the, when the police stopped him. Of course, that he had his cousin in the car with the bad attitude as you talked about. There's always someone screaming and hollering on the side. Yeah, his cousin was that guy. But the police kept telling him, listen, get off the phone. And one thing led to another back and forth. He showed him his license, insurance card. There was no problem. There was no reason really to be stopped. So the cops was getting very upset with the young brother because he's about 25. One thing led to another. They told him he would uh, lock him up. I said, it's okay. We'll meet with his captain tomorrow. Tell him we'll meet your captain tomorrow. Because sometimes people don't know who you are and don't know the procedures to go through. So now when he told him that because he kept arguing with him to get off the telephone. You don't know who I'm talking to because I'm talking to a detective. Mm -hmm. So when he told them all of this here, and there are things you could say for them to stop doing, what, especially when they know they're wrong. We will meet with your captain, and I'll go on three. I'll go online and tell you who your captain is tomorrow, and we'll meet him. And believe me, they had a whole new attitude. So there's things you can do, and we acknowledge that. And like I said, I'm, I'm more or less. I try to keep to. What we're doing is the biggest problem because I'm tired of the crime in our neighborhood and I don't want to make excuses because for the 20 names you have up here from the last time we met and we dealt with Amadou Dia, I mean with uh, Omar Edwards, Omar. how many people in our community have been shot and killed? Oh, man. It's, you know, so yes. that's my problem. How many people have been shot, young kids getting shot with AK-47s, all type of stuff, and mm -hmm. they just calling it putting in work. So I don't really want to, the police is not my problem. The last thing you have is Omar Edwards up here. People. Right. Since Omar Edmonds, how many people been shot? Well, I can tell you, it's, it's a lot. And then go to, we, we understand that, but I'm gonna okay. let you go. To, to, this is why did I stay away from the police brutality? Because what we're doing is just it's a sad state of affair to turn around, and it's not New York. You watch the first 48, and every time you turn around, you just see 18 year olds, 21 year olds. Norm, and, 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 and you're right, Norm, but like I said, right, and, and you're 100% right, I back you up, but it still don't give the police the right to victimize no, us, too. So tell us about the you know, stats now, you got here. Now, the stats I have here, right, first of all, Norm, the stats that I have here is because when I do the workshops mm -hmm. and I speak to the young folks as well as, you you know, some, some older gentlemen, I tell them that if you don't listen, this is what we get. Right? First, we get this. Norm, would you just help me raise this? Mm -hmm. First, we get this. When we hear of a male, a young, uh -huh. a young male black shot and killed, mm -hmm. we, get, we get the marches, mm -hmm. right? Because of the young male black was killed. This right here came from the verdict of the uh, Sean Bell mm -hmm. incident. And I was out there, I was out there for crowd control because I had already got word because we got officers within the police department and I'm not a member of the 100 blacks and law enforcement okay. who care anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm a member of the brothers and sisters who care. But the 100 blacks along with the national Latino officers, very good organizations, exactly. right? Member of both of them. Now, in this 
picture right here, that was me being upset with the verdict, mm -hmm. right? Here, this is one of Sean Bell's cousins who was upset after the verdict. Now, the reason why I was out there with some of my people mm -hmm. was because we had gotten word that PD was going to be out there and they were ready to bust heads along with the court officers, right? To bust heads and lock up all disorderly people. We already knew the only people that was going to be out there was going to be blacks and Hispanics. So we went out there, right, to try to keep everybody calm. Not Whether the verdict went for us mm -hmm. or against us, but I was expecting it to go against us. It kind of shocked me a little bit because I thought this time, right, when you had supervisors in that incident, mm -hmm. you had the main, you had the supervisor, the lieutenant, mm -hmm. saying that from, from the minute that they decided to go out, all rule, procedures and rules were violated. I thought that right there would have been sufficient enough. Right to convict. So if the young people don't listen, they get killed. They get marches, and then after they get marches, they get this. So, but here's my problem. Though here's my problem. We can only march, and there's a lot of there's people in our community that keeps these things going, because we can only come out after the police do something. But when little Tony down the block got shot, nobody's outraged. Is business as usual, nobody cared. So this is what bothered me. Sean Bell got shot and we got outraged. Same with Amadou Diallo. Lawyers make money. It's true. Elected politicians. Politicians look really well. They didn't mm. come out there when this one got shot. When you go to Barrow Park, when something happened in their community, their elected officials is out there. When something happened in ours, only a few people make enough noise for everybody to come out and guess what when they come out there then guess what it's always more publicity for them but you know what though norm mm -hmm. you know what mm -hmm. i gotta i gotta say you're s somewhat mistaken because there are people mm -hmm. in these neighborhoods where our kids are getting gunned down and they are doing something about it. there are programs mm -hmm. in there you don't hear about them because the media don't cover them <laughs> you know mm -hmm. you don't hear about them but there are people in all of our neighborhoods that are out there doing the best they could to get our kids into something else rather than being out there on the street selling drugs uh yeah getting involved Involved with gangs or having any police contact. So they're out there. You know, they're just little people. Yeah. But just like the 100 blacks. When I was in the 100 blacks in law enforcement who care, along with the national Latino officers, along with brothers and sisters who care, we're out there with Snug and Harlem and all of We got Snug. You heard about Snug. Mm -hmm. They're out there. They care. I care. Nope. You, you know, and there's other people that care too. So we're out there trying to do our part. We just don't talk here that. Exactly. And we don't see it. That's why we need media such as yours to be out there. We really need to give our stories in the hood. We don't need the Post and the Daily but News they don't, they don't and then the they because, and, they're, and they're not accurate. They're not accurate. Right? If you don't they only come out. Media, you'll never get the story. That's why we need programs such as yours. Mm -hmm. you, you know, where we need to bring some brothers and sisters in here who like, instead of shooting guns, shoot a camera. You, you know what I'm saying? Come learn how to do that at the but, on the spot. Well, you know what I say to you, which is real simple. Just pick up the phone and call me. Exactly. Well, see, your line, your your line is always open. Come see, that's what I'm me. saying. But we need we need others, not just you. We need others also. You know, with with these cable networks, you know, throughout the boroughs. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We need we need some of them to come out to our neighborhoods and show our kids, right? Show them another pathway to success by shooting and doing things like this. But when they don't listen. And like you said, and I'm tired of marching. Mm -hmm. our, our, our history, that's all we've been doing is marching. Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, all, you know, I'm tired of the marching, mm -hmm. right? After the march, then we get this. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Then we get, you, you, you know, the media, right, right, saying, okay, now the cops were acquitted or whatever. And then, boom, it's over. And then we have to sit and wait for the next trial to be gunned down, mm -hmm. you know, by the police. You, you know, like I said. I want to tell you, Norm, that I am not against the police department. Okay. I love good police. Okay. I despise bad police. Okay. You, you know, and I know that there's more good police out here than bad police. Well, but it seems us. like most of them are tell in our neighborhood. About, tell us about now, the stats. Now, with the stats, mm -hmm. the stats back up what I say, mm -hmm. Norm. And what I'm saying about, you got an article, right? You got an article from May 12, two, 2010. Out. Al Baker from the New York Times. New York minorities more likely to be frisked, right? Not just him, not just him. Then you got 
A Daily News article, two state politicians compare NYPD stop and frisk policy to Arizona's new immigration law. Mm -hmm. You have this, blacks stopped more often by police, a study found. You got Jim Crow policing by Bob Herbert in the New York Times. All of this, all of this, and I got more. You had the Bed Stuyvesant, mm -hmm. right? All of this, a simple stop, question, and frisk, right, can lead up to someone being locked up for not doing anything wrong could lead up to somebody being crippled for the rest of their life, right? And last but not least, could lead up to their death, right? And when that happens, right, if the police were at fault and nothing happens to them, how could we stop even the crime in our neighborhood. When we're being victimized, you just said we're scared of our own. Now we got to be scared of the, the very same who sworn to protect us too? You know, that's why I was saying I don't condone what our people are doing. One of you your know, former and members. Hold on now. One of your former members, Eric Adams, yes. state senator, lawmaker now. Yes. You ran for elected office to be a lawmaker. What is Eric doing? You know what? Governor Patterson. I Go ahead. Didn't he uh, open up the books, uh, statistically speaking? Did the statistics can be known? Well, I, I don't, I don't know, but I know that bro brother Eric Adams. Mm -hmm. I know that he's doing all he could do in his neighborhood. He brought out that SAG campaign, mm -hmm. you know, which means a lot. People might say, "Oh, but that's just, you know, our young people pulling up their pants." Well, you know, we got to start somewhere, you know. And I don't let anybody in my house. My kids can't bring their friends in no, my house in with their pants hanging down because they're not going to sit there sweaty if it's in the summertime, you know, behinds on my good furniture. Not. You know, that ain't happening. <laughs> You, you know what I'm saying? But Eric is doing his thing, and I ran into Eric. Mm -hmm. I ran into Eric at ML King, um, they, at, at, at Reverend Al Sharpton's, and Eric stopped me and said that he wanted me to do some workshops in his district mm -hmm. because the message needs to get, get out twofold. Eric is a retired uh, captain, which, yes. which you know. Now, again, with the stats, and I don't condone drug selling, but when I've done these workshops, there what surprises me is that drug dealers mm -hmm. have listened to come to my workshop and the drug dealers have started suing the city of New York and the police officers. Mm -hmm. The drug dealers. And I don't condone drugs. Uh -huh. but, but, but we, so the taxpayers you know? is paying for the drug dealers to have the rights. Exactly. To not be frisked to get the drugs and the guns off the street. What, is what, that what you tell no, me? No, no. Uh -huh. what, what I'm telling you mm -hmm. is, what I'm telling you is, you got officers making good arrests mm -hmm. for drugs, mm -hmm. but they're violating the drug dealers in the process of making a good arrest. And that's and, what we're protecting? <laughs> this. Okay. We're going to have to close this out. We're going to have to close this out. Let's pull this up. And we're going to close this out. So our viewers can see this here. Of course, my producers over there is giving me the signals and making real faces. <laughs> so put the music on in a minute. This is the result of all the police shootings and the deaths and all type of stuff. You tell us what it is. Right. This is mostly of the Sean Bell, and this is um, uh, the cops and various shootings, right? Controversial shootings, right? Where they are, wh what happened to them, you know, where they are now, where they went, and. All it is, this is, you know, a display of mostly, like I said, Sean Bell. But like I said, this is what our kids get. This is what our families go through well, when they don't listen to my instructions in my book. We, tell them how they can get in touch with you. Well, they can get in touch with me by um, whattodoaboutthis.com, mm -hmm. right? Say and again? whattodoaboutthis.com. Mm -hmm. And on, the, on my website... Um, they can reach me by putting in their information or they can call this number 212-726-1468 say it again 212-726-1468 that's the brothers and sisters who care that's the new organization that I told you that I'm bringing about right and and we have a, a address you know where our mail is 244 Fifth Avenue second floor New York New York 10001. Please check out Mr. Carlton Berkeley's website. We have to go now, pay the bills. We'll be right back. Take it easy, my brother. We have to end this. Okay. Till next time. Till brother. next time. Give us a call. Okay. Oh, thank you.